in late 1944, the Allied forces were advancing towards the Japanese home islands. While Germany was months away from surrender, in the Pacific theatre, American troops were closing in on Japan, taking the islands one by one. The Japanese had lost several major battles, hundreds of men and aircraft, and they were struggling to compete with the Allied industrial capacity. And yet despite their heavy losses, they were unwilling to surrender. A radical strategy emerges, kamikaze. In the later stages of the Second World War in the Pacific, Japan was faced by overwhelming American naval power. Increasingly unable to make effective air attacks against American ships, Japanese forces turned to suicide attacks, using pilots flying aircraft laden with bombs as improvised missiles, in the hope of destroying Allied ships at the cost of the aircraft and the pilot's life. The suicide attackers were known as the kamikaze. Their name comes from two Japanese words, kami, meaning god or divinity, and kaze, meaning wind or air. And so kamikaze is usually translated as divine wind. In 1944, a special attack force was formed, a group of official kamikaze pilots. Their first significant action took place at the Battle of Leyte Gulf in October 1944. At Leyte Gulf, the Japanese attempted to prevent Allied forces from occupying the Philippines, precipitating one of the largest naval battles in history. During the battle, five kamikaze A6M0s attacked several escort carriers. All five missed their targets or were destroyed by anti-aircraft fire. However, as one aircraft aborted, they aimed instead for the USS St. Lowe, diving into the flight deck and sinking the carrier. It was the first major warship sunk by a kamikaze attack. The following day, dozens more kamikaze strikes were made. In total, five ships were sunk and 23 were heavily damaged by kamikaze attacks. After the Battle of Leyte Gulf, the Japanese decided to expand their kamikaze strategy. Most of the aircraft used for kamikaze strikes are standard Japanese combat aircraft. Foremost among them is the Mitsubishi Zero Fighter. This aircraft had given the Japanese Navy control of the skies through 1941 and 1942, but by the start of the kamikaze campaign in 1944, the Zero was outclassed by more powerful American fighters. This particular aircraft behind me was operated in the Pacific and was abandoned on the island of Taroa when it became unmaintainable. Had it still been serviceable, maybe it might have been used as a kamikaze in 1944 or 1945. It was recovered as a wreck in the 1990s and later passed into the Imperial War Museum's collection. During the kamikaze campaign, around 650 Zero fighters are expended, more than any other type. The campaign sees the use of a wide variety of aircraft, even including wooden biplane trainer planes. Alongside the use of Zeros and other aircraft in the kamikaze campaign, the Japanese also began to develop an aircraft specifically for suicide missions, the Yokosuka MXY-7 Oka. Work begins on the design of the Oka in 1943, actually before the first kamikaze attacks are made. The idea comes from a Japanese transport pilot named Mitsuo Ota. Initially his designs go nowhere, but in 1944 he's summoned to present his design to the Japanese Navy. From June 1944, Following heavy Japanese aircraft losses in battle around the Mariana Islands, development transfers to the Japanese naval arsenal at Yokosuka. Test flights begin in October 1944, with a successful test flight of a rocket-powered Orca in November 1944. The IWM's Orca is a Model 11, the only operational variant. The Orca is a rocket-powered glider carrying a large 1,200kg explosive warhead. It's about 6 metres long and 5 metres wide. With its rockets lit, it could reach 400 miles an hour and in its final dive, its speed might reach as much as 575 miles an hour. The Orca's rockets had limited range, and so it had to be carried into action by a larger aircraft, typically a twin-engine Mitsubishi G4M bomber. Once the bomber reached the target area, the Orca pilot would detach himself from the bomber, ignite his rockets, and aim for an enemy vessel. Once the rockets were ignited, the pilot would fly the missile towards the target. The Orca could reach incredible speeds, making it difficult to counter the attack, but also difficult for the Orca pilot to control. Updated versions of the Orca were in development, aiming to fix some of the aircraft's flaws, but these were not developed in time, and only the Orca 11 saw active service. The Allied troops who encountered these attacks referred to the aircraft as backer bombs, a Japanese word meaning foolish. The idea of a suicide aircraft was an alien concept in the West, but for the Japanese, their culture had long understood suicide as something that, under certain conditions, was honourable and appropriate behaviour. The kamikaze didn't necessarily think of their mission as one of suicide. Instead, they saw it as fulfilment of their duty to the emperor, a ruler widely believed to be divine. The word oka in Japanese means cherry blossom. The cherry blossom is a popular symbol in Japanese culture. 
Cherry blossom is beautiful, but its beauty is short-lived, and soon the petals fall from the trees or are blown away by the wind. For the Japanese, the cherry blossom has become a symbol for the fleeting nature of human life. What did you think of the kamikaze pilots, the whole tactic and thing? I mean, did you think... think... Bloody idiots. I mean, uh, for the hundreds they sent out, uh, as only f a few succeeded, certainly did have a lot of damage, which you didn't have much defence against. But majority of them just crashed into the sea and that was it. You know, if they didn't get shoot down, they run out of petrol or they missed their targets because they weren't very well trained, you know. There was only taught to fly a plane from here to there and that's all they knew. They, we had so many guns on the ship, it was incredible. There was not only four fives, there was pom-poms, oilicons and all sorts of things. But if you got like that chemicals, he's determined to get through. That's it, nothing's going to stop him, you know, it doesn't matter how much aircraft he got, you know. The Japanese ramped up their kamikaze campaign, but the Allied naval forces had learnt lessons during the Battle of Leyte Gulf and had begun to prepare for the threat of kamikaze. The Allies had a number of defences against the kamikaze. Away from the ships themselves, the key defence was combat air patrol by naval aircraft, trying to intercept incoming Japanese aircraft before they reached Allied ships. Naval aircraft were also used to attempt to suppress Japanese airfields, attacking kamikaze as they took off, bombing runways and attacking aircraft on the ground. The Allies also used destroyers as radar pickets. These were small warships fitted with radar. Positioned 20 miles out from the main fleet, these ships provided early warning of incoming air raids. Unfortunately for their crews, these ships were very exposed and were often subjected to attacks by multiple kamikaze. Aboard ship, the key defence was provided by anti-aircraft guns. A large fleet aircraft carrier like the USS Bunker Hill would carry a dozen 5-inch anti-aircraft guns, as well as dozens of smaller 40mm and 20mm guns. New technology, such as proximity fuses and radar gun laying, made anti-aircraft fire more effective. Finally, there was damage control. By 1944, the Allied navies had sophisticated and well-trained damage control procedures. It was rare for a kamikaze strike to sink a vessel outright, and so a critical factor in the vessel's survival was the efficiency with which a ship's crew could extinguish fires, repair structural damage, and restore a ship's systems. In October 1944, a special attack squadron was formed specifically to fly the Oka into battle, the Japanese 721st Naval Air Squadron, known as the Jinrai Butai, which translates as Divine Thunderbolt Corps, or the Thunder Gods. I think inevitably, different pilots had different feelings. Kamikaze pilots are typically thought of as being fanatical zealots, eager to die for their country and their emperor. It's likely that some really did feel that way. Others will have had more mixed feelings and acted more out of a sense of obligation than enthusiasm. And not all kamikaze pilots were volunteers. After the volunteers ran out, others were shamed or coerced into volunteering. By late 1944, soon after the first successful test flight of the Oka, the US forces were in reach of the home islands. By the spring of 1945, the Japanese strategic situation was dire. In summer 1944, US forces captured the Marshall and Pulau Islands. By November, islands like Tnian, Saipan and Guam were bases for US heavy bombers able to strike at the Japanese home islands. This led to devastating air raids, including against Tokyo in March, which may have killed 100,000 people. At sea, US submarines were sinking Japanese merchant shipping, hampering the import of vital raw materials. On land, Japanese manpower is being consumed in battles in China, in Burma, as well as in New Guinea and the South Pacific. For the Japanese, Okinawa isn't just another Pacific island, it's actually part of Japan proper. So the looming Battle of Okinawa has political and psychological significance as well. The initial invasion of Okinawa took place on the 1st of April 1945, the largest amphibious assault in the Pacific theatre. It becomes the bloodiest of the battles in the Pacific, particularly for the Japanese. For the invasion of Okinawa, the Allies assemble a massive invasion fleet. Dozens of aircraft carriers, 18 battleships, two dozen cruisers, and well over 100 destroyers and destroyer escorts. The Allied invasion fleet has enormous firepower in both naval guns and aircraft. At first, American troops make rapid progress because the Japanese choose not to resist the initial landings. Instead, the Japanese built immensely strong defensive positions, particularly in Okinawa's mountains. These defences prove enormously costly to overcome. In addition, tens of thousands of Okinawan civilians are killed, having suffered terribly. At the Battle of Okinawa, kamikaze became a core part of the Japanese naval defence strategy, and it was here that the Oka were brought into combat. 
Around 850 Orca were built in total, but relatively few saw combat. In March 1945, the Orca flew their first combat sortie, but it resulted in failure. One of Orca's biggest weaknesses was its limited range and its need to be carried into battle by a larger bomber plane. Its parent aircraft was vulnerable to interception. In their first combat sortie, the Japanese attacked with 16 bombers carrying Orca, escorted by 30 Zero fighters. They were intercepted by two squadrons of US naval fighters with the loss of every single bomber and their Orca. On the 1st of April 1945, the first day of the invasion of Okinawa, six G4Ms carried Orcas into battle. It's uncertain whether any of the Orcas hit their targets, but the USS West Virginia was damaged. None of the G4Ms returned. Just over a week later, nine G4Ms and Orcas went into battle again. This time, a destroyer was hit and sunk, the USS Manert El Abel. Over April, May and June, numerous attacks were launched by the Orcas and the G4Ms against the US fleet off Okinawa. Many of the G4Ms were destroyed and many Orcas failed to hit their targets, likely falling victim to anti-aircraft fire. Alongside the Orca, the Japanese continued to fly kamikaze missions with Zero fighters and a variety of other aircraft and even suicide boats. Between April and June, the Japanese flew over 400 kamikaze sorties at Okinawa. The British Pacific Fleet also came under fire from kamikaze attacks in the battle. Significant damage was done to the task force, but nothing debilitating. The armoured flight decks of the British carriers meant they fared better under these bombardments than the US carriers with flight decks made of wood. Ultimately, kamikaze missions played a significant role in the Battle of Okinawa, but it was not enough to turn the tide for the Japanese. Around 350 vessels were hit by kamikaze. 47 were sunk and the rest were damaged. Of the ships sunk, none were strategically important and all could be replaced. Among the damaged ships were 31 aircraft carriers of different types. In some cases, for instance to USS Bunker Hill, the damage was severe enough to put the ship out of action for months. But the kamikaze could never inflict enough damage to derail Allied naval operations. Nonetheless, their human toll was appalling. The Japanese expended 2,600 aircraft in kamikaze attacks and with them the lives of 4,000 airmen. The attacks killed more than 7,000 Allied naval personnel and wounded many more. The kamikaze failed for a variety of reasons. I think a big one is faulty assumptions. The Japanese overestimated how many kamikaze would be able to evade Allied fighters and anti-aircraft guns. They overestimated the likelihood of direct hits against enemy ships and overestimated how much damage a crashing aircraft could do to a large warship. The Japanese also overestimated how much impact the kamikaze would have on Allied strategic decision making they thought the psychological effect of their attacks would be so demoralising that it would reduce the Americans' will to fight the war to the bitter end. They were wrong. 